If any of you guys are familiar with my channel, you'll know that I like building and fabricating stuff and I love welding and creating things. And recently I needed something to put on my tractor, preferably on the three point hitch, that I could hook up to a trailer, you know, car trailer, boat, whatever, and move it around. Um, that being said, I started looking at two inch receiver tube, like just a blank receiver tube. I found them anywhere from like 30 to $50. Like, all right, that's a starting point. So I started getting quotes on more, you know, scrap pieces of metal and so on, using what I had and so on and so forth. And I was, I was like, let's just see what's out there on eBay for pre-made uh, trailering units that could be put on a draw bar. And let me show you this box. I paid $65 for this box and that included free shipping. Now, let me get this thing open and show you guys what's in here. As you can see, the box is uh, really stove up, um, not packaged well, but I don't care because what is in here cannot get hurt by the UPS man. And I don't send that as a challenge. I just say, you know, packaging in this case doesn't really care, especially for $60, $65. Like I couldn't build what is in this box for that kind of money. So, just keep in mind guys, 65 bucks. You don't get much for 65 bucks. I can't even take the wife out for dinner for 65 bucks. Let alone buy all the individual components to make this thing. I mean, check it out guys. Now, it's probably not the best quality in the world, but how often am I gonna use something like this? So, here it is. Looks like these are all welded. There's a big knot they welded on the inside so that you can put your links in for your three point or your pins, I should say. Now, I mean, how cool is that? Like, it's got a little D ring, you know, not super. I mean, you probably couldn't do a whole lot of pulling. Um, yeah, it's, it's not even a welded on the, on the back, it's just literally folded together. So, I mean, that's just something you can put a rope around. It's something to look cool, I guess. But the main thing is this right here, the receiver tube. It takes a two inch receiver tube that'll fit most hitches. Um, I mean, just this thing right here is worth, in my eyes, 60 bucks. Um, and th some of these cheaper units right here was open. So if you leave it in the tractor, this fills with rain. This is nicely welded and capped with a piece of bent 3 8 metal. This feels to be eighth inch wall. This feels like it might be a little thicker here. This is three eighths metal. Um, overall, I'm really happy with just the look of this. I mean, that's pretty cool. Anyway, enough rambling. Interesting how they did that. Huh. They literally put the wire through these pins so that it wouldn't get lost. That's kind of cool. So, some assembly required. You know, guys, overall, for the kind of money that you spent on something like this, I'm happy. I mean, like I said, you don't get much for 65 bucks. And that's with tax and everything, guys. I mean, ship to your door with free shipping. Like, so that being said, if you take all that stuff away from the cost of this, this thing is probably only like 30 bucks. Because you figure it must have take it must have took quite a bit to ship this thing here. And the nuts are a little funky. Probably where they welded them, they didn't really bother to run a tap through these after they welded them, but uh, that's okay. Put a pin or a bolt, whatever you have. And then just tighten away. Wow! Oh, good thing I ate my Wheaties this morning. Doesn't really take much to assemble this boy.
Not bad. Look at that, that even fits. Cool. Cool. This old Ford 8N, it's a 1948 model. This is what I chose to put this hitch on. Looks like it's gonna work good. The only thing is, there's quite a bit of sway in this. I'm definitely gonna need to get my sway bars, the metal bars there that go on there. Cause that's gonna be ridiculous having that on there with trying to pull a trailer around. Also, it looks like I could make some shims there to keep that top link from bouncing around. Not that it really needs it. And this hook is kinda cheesy. I don't think you could really pull on that much. I don't know if you can see it or not, but that's actually just an open loop that they squished together. Um, anyway, I'd probably use this hook if I really needed to do any serious towing with a chain or whatever, but the receiver tube part is really nice. So that's gonna come in handy, I think. Let's see if I can find some, uh, some sway struts. I've got the brackets underneath the fenders that that'll, that'll connect right to it. So one other thing guys, the quality of this thing is not that great. Like you can see some of the welds are just awful. And they didn't even line this up, you know, on the center. I don't know if you can see that. But this is like offset from the main from the main piece there. But you know guys, this probably came out of some workshop in like Pakistan or something like that and it supported their economy, you know, and what am I going to do with this? How could I how could I build this for 60 bucks shipped to my door? I mean, you just can't argue with that. For what little I'm going to use this, I think that's pretty good. But, you know, hats off to whoever made this thing. I don't know how they did it so cheap. I mean, just the raw material alone, you know, then to ship the thing to my house. I mean, it's just unbelievable. So anyway, there you go, guys. Okay, as you can see, I've got my sway control added here. This is much more sturdy. But what I wanted to show you guys, one of the downsides of buying cheap Chinese stuff or cheap, you know, Middle Eastern stuff is this is the pin, this is the linchpin that came with this thing. As you can see, it fits in there, no problem. However, if you look right there, you'll see this has a proud shoulder. Now, this is your typical linchpin found on most every tractor doesn't fit but you'll notice how this is flat here that's done for a reason so that you know you can just put pins in against something flush so anyway now I've got to take this oddball pin take it over to the grinder sorry guys take it over to the grinder and just face that down so it goes in anyway other than that not bad that's all I got to do okay so that's done basically just ground that flat so I'll just have to keep these linchpins with this unit at all times. Because <laughs> if I ever lose these things, that's going to be a pain in the butt to find another linchpin or grind down a linchpin that fits. But anyways, much sturdier. I'm going to love that. Put a, put a hitch in there and this thing will be great. Maybe I'll make a shim for this too. Okay, so I've just got some old, uh, pretty much this is gray galvanized ducting. Just turn that on the lathe, that's gonna be the shim for the top pin. Those are my bushings, just to keep that top link centered. Now, if you notice, this thing is kind of bent wider at the top than it is in the bottom. I just made these bushings tight enough so that they'll come out easy and they won't get rusted on there. Anyway, Let's go try this sucker out. Here's my old boat. I'm going to move it so I can mow underneath it and get the tires turning. It's been there for a while. As you can see, my pickup here got stuck. It's just a two-wheel drive one. I didn't use my four-wheel drive, but I figured this would be a good opportunity to move this thing and try out this uh, new implement for my tractor. So I'll set you guys up and uh, show you how this works.
works pretty slick. I don't even have to button up the coupler there and I can move them all over the place without even getting off the tractor. So now I can mow in behind here and let the tires sit in a different spot. Let all the worms breathe. <laughs> that's been a while since that's been sitting there. As you can see by the buried blocks. Ugh, I think it's been four or five years. So anyway, nice to just let it move. Let the ground beneath the trailer move. That all can be mowed now. Cool.